Greetings, Spine, Anders, Damon, and Joachim. This is Chad coming to you from now in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And it's really, really kind of Norwegian weather outside. We got snow and rain and freezing rain and stuff. But I'm um, working on the pens that I promised or that I said I was going to send you guys. Uh, why? Just because you guys are awesome. I love your videos. So this is me doing something nice for you since you do something nice for a couple thousand people all over the world. So. I've already finished two. I finished uh, uh, Anders' pen and uh, Joachim's, and I'll show you those at the end. Getting ready to uh, set up the lathe for Damon's, and then if we have time, I'm really hoping so, or enough film, and we're going to get spines on there too. So, first things first, safety first. Got to put goggles on. So, preparing the mandrel, since Damon asked for bloodwood, you got to put the bushings on either end so I know where to stop. So I don't go down too low and then it blows the pen out and then I have a broken brass tube and it looks like garbage. All these other bushings are just spacers so I can then uh, get the lathe up to speed. And this is blood wood so it's one of the harder woods in the world uh, density wise and just general hardness wise. So Damon, good choice. It's my favorite. Sorry for the bounciness, guys. Oh, uh, my lovely wife, Allie, who's pregnant with our son, Liam, is the awesome camera lady. So, so set the tool rest. And this is set at about 2200 RPMs, 2250-ish RPMs. And good old fashioned semi-sharp turning tool. And time to make some sawdust. First thing I do is knock off all the all the edges. Gonna get it down to a round, and then I'm gonna take it all the way down to the bushings. Now, blood was kind of pain in the ass wood to deal with because it uh, the grain interlocks. So sometimes you get tear outs or and I'll just decide to blow out and leave a big gaping, gaping hole in there. So I need to be fairly aggressive with the cuts on it, but since this is going to be a bolt action pen for the bolt action guys, you got to try and keep it uh, pretty straight. Damon, I decided to go with a different wood. I asked, I asked Spine what he wanted, and he said, uh, I don't know. I have no clue what you're talking about. So, went with a wild olive uh, piece. It's got a really, really nice grain pattern in it for Spine. done with it now. The hardest part is taking my time and getting, well first off, the main barrel of it as uh, straight as possible. And then also down here at the edge of the bushings, I don't want to go, like I said, too hard or too deep. No jokes. But I want to try and get it as close to flush with the bushing as possible because then it makes a smooth transition. to do now. This is a single barrel pen so it goes pretty quick. If I was using camphor or, or lighter wood I would have been done about five minutes ago. Now I'm going to knock off all the ridges. I got some ridges right here in the center. Go back to 100 grit sandpaper. And try and get everything nice and smooth. Well, okay so 100 grit doesn't get it really smooth. Work well. 
types of grids. We're only doing four, four types of sanding. So 100 grit, 240, 320, and then stopping at 400 before we start the polish. We're already on the second bit. Now with the 100 grit, I don't go against the grain just because, you know, yeah, it's, it'll just put gouges in the other direction, it makes it harder to sand off. But already, pretty smooth, just with the 240. You stop the lathe, once it stops, then you gotta go against the grain, go long ways, knocks off any of those uh, ridge lines. And please don't mind the messiness of the garage. This is for an order I'm hoping to get. About 90, uh, 95 pen blanks over here. So I found that uh, hoping is really good. It's kind of how I met my wife, actually. I was hoping I was going to meet a wonderful woman and an awesome lady. And lo and behold, eh, I did. Guess what else? She said yes, too. We can joke and say he got bonus too, because uh, oh, yeah. apparently there's a there's a, a hyperactive seven year old over here dancing on a footstool. <laughs> say hi, Natalie. Come on. Hi. <laughs> Which we can't see your head down because you got off the stoop stool. I'll turn it off. Back. Yes. Hyperactive seven-year-olds. <laughs> Careful. All right. Next step. Mylon's friction polish. This stuff has, you know, good old-fashioned science. Friction uh -huh. generates heat, uh -huh. makes it nice and shiny. Uh -huh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I told you she's goofy. I so. For my demo pens, I do anywhere from, I don't know, three to five coats of polish. I don't know if Alex can zoom in on this. I don't know if Alex can zoom in on this, but mm -hmm. you can see it right now, it's kind of <laughs> dull-ish looking. Uh -huh. As soon as I turn this on, put this polish on, yeah. blood wood. Uh -huh. <sighs> it will blow your mind up. <laughs> or Away, sorry. <laughs> okay, that's enough, Scoot. Uh, yeah. Bloodwood gets its name from the uh, color of the heartwood, which goes anywhere from, I got some pieces over there, some uh, long boards of it. Goes anywhere from lightish red with orange and yellow streaks in it to literally crimson. It's fantastic. It actually smells a little bit like cinnamon, too, <laughs> when you're turning it. That was Doc Holiday in my pocket telling me that I got a text message. What? My phone. Uh, so, you know, because you guys, and I gotta be fair, you know, to Joachim and Anders, I had to put about eight coats of polish on theirs. Yeah. But, you know, you don't need it. It's not like when you're using clear coat, you have to sit there and spray it, wait, spray it, wait. So, this is already on the third coat. This is true. And I don't know, I think I have a semi-high pain tolerance. So uh, it gets kind of shiny because the hotter it gets, the shinier it gets. And you only hold on to it is until it burns. So yes, I'm burning myself for you guys. Hope you uh, like it. Uh, it did. And all the schmutz you see on there coming off, that's the polish is sort of baking into this. That's just all the residue and whatnot and the natural oils mixed with the sawdust. Mm -hmm. I'd say blood wood, like I said, is my favorite wood, but it's probably one of the top, like, I don't know, 15, 20 hardest woods in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I got stuff that's is so heavy it'll actually sink when you put it in water. You guys didn't want those, so as Damon said you didn't want those, so I didn't make them out of that. Uh, 
And last coat. I uh, might have to break this video up in a couple of parts for you guys. But I'm not a YouTuber other than watching you guys work, so. So once you get this on there, this last coat on there, burn it in. And this thing's folded over about three or four times, so I can actually, and I can feel the heat coming through this cloth. Will you please stop over there? Thank you. So, that part's done. Let it spin for a minute. Then air, air cool off. Clean and shred. That's gonna put the pilot or that puts a bit of a high shine on it. And keep these things in a certain order because they're for actually for a different size pen or a different size kit. So if I get them out of order then Kind of so well. And since the polish is still, the finish is still pretty fresh on there, take it off with a cloth. And prep its fines. So we'll be back in a minute and we'll do spines. It's fine. This one's yours. This is a chunk of wild olive. Um, I'm not sure where exactly this olive came from. Could have been from the U.S. Could have been from Rome. It's not Bethlehem olive just because I can tell from mainly the color of the sapwood and whatnot. But this grain pattern should translate down into the actual pen itself. Um, it just depends on how far down the swirls go. Can't always tell. So, see it's first. This one ought to smell a lot better than Bloodwood too. That one, Bloodwood smells a bit like cinnamon. This one, believe it or not, actually smells a little bit like dill pickles. But it's olive. I don't know. Mm. That sometimes happens. Yep, I smell pickles. You're knocking off the corners. This is a half inch roughing gouge, and actually for yours, fine. I'll actually, uh, you can actually feel where the ridges are as it's turning. Um, and you stop it, so you see all the sharp edges or the hard edges still on there, and all the tool marks and whatnot from just hitting it. Once I get it down to uh, down to the round, I'll switch tools, and on this one, and take it down uh, with something slightly different. Mind you, I'm still really new at this. Well, okay, I've been doing it for a couple of years, but so this is a bowl gouge, or a, yeah, I think it's a three eighth bowl gouge or something like that. And it, it helps take things off in a slightly different way. Not as uh, I guess you could do finer cuts. Some finer movements with this one, but for these pens, I like, try, like I said, try and keep the barrels nice and straight. So 
So I, I have a bit more control with this one. So I can control. Uh, uh, so you see, I can put I can put ridges on here or hills and valleys, whatever. I don't know what the technical term is for them, but. I'm sure there is one somewhere. I have to switch back to the other tool. This one's kind of bouncing a little bit. High spots off. Got a little bit of a dip, about you know, a quarter inch away from this tip, but man, that's not going to come out. Otherwise, I'll go down too deep. And uh, it should be okay. Forty grit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little high still. Huh? Just a tad. This has got some pretty green on it. Uh oh, pizza's here. Yeah, try to ignore the doggy barking in the background. He's a little Irish Terrier mutt thing, dog kinda. Thinks he's five feet tall, he's only about my yay tall. Ah, 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 ah. 
too, and they got this warp tomorrow. And yes, I am trying to figure out a way to make a uh, dry erase marker that will fit into here. So you guys can use some of these for frost grave too. Maybe make them look like a magic wand or something like that. I'm not quite that good yet. A slight problem though, my vise and this pen kit, they don't like each other. My vise is a little baby table vise, and it uh, has about a half inch or a few centimeters too short to build this pen kit with. Text message. When you see this on video, they look nice. They look really nice. When you see them in person, and no, I'm not keeping this PG-13. Holy shit, they're fantastic. That might have to be edited out later on, not quite sure. No? <laughs> okay. I've got you know, about 65 different types of wood here. Anywhere from 14 to, 14 to 20 different styles of pens that I enjoy making. A couple I don't, so you can make wine bottle stoppers too. That's what this will be eventually. Block wood, something. Whatever my mind decides to do. Or mind attempts to tell my hands to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Because I'm a klutz, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Put the lid back on the polish. Otherwise, bad things happen. But um, I'm not sure if you can see this right now or not. But dude, my CEO called me dude the other day. By the way, when I had a meeting with him. But you know what, dude, that's gorgeous. Tail stock out of the way. Oops. Like I said, these are from a separate kit. These are from the cigar style. So they go in a certain order, so I make sure I keep them in the proper order. Not I didn't touch it. 
That one's all stuck though. Huh? Hold it up. I, I gotta build it first. Through the light. So like I said, you got, you'll be able to feel there's a bit of a groove right over here. You feel that with your finger. That'll be down close, or actually, I'll probably put that up to the top because that's like the awesome part. Um, and I'm trying to get it so I have the clip away from the awesome green pattern, but we'll see what happens. Alright, so that was fine. So this is Damon's. So, gotta do things in order. I did Damon's first, so it's only right that I build Damon's first. And since I just did what, uh, Anders and Joachim's, I kind of know exactly where my stuff's supposed to go. So. Alright, we're gonna take a break because I'm gonna readjust the camera so oh, I'm okay. actually see better. <laughs> Alright, that works. Over to here. Damon's first. Alright. The Bloodwood. This is antique brass. Probably not real, it's just color. So, as I said, my, my vice is a little small. So, you gotta be careful. You crank down too hard, you're gonna snap the wood. That's how I used to make all my first pens. It nicely splits right down the side. Not good. Yeah, I have one. So since this wall fit into the vise, we do things the old fashioned way. Move stuff out of the way. The, oh yeah, by the way, this is a blank for a piece of uh, for a pen that my son's gonna make next time I see him. But I can move through with a couple hole and I have muscle. Come on, those there. Almost. I'm 230 pounds. This ain't easy. And then you see, ah, I'm all fitting the vice. But we're running out of camera time. So. No, we're not. Right there. Okay. Refill or the ink cartridge in. Spring on top. Thirty caliber bloodwood antique brass. But you might ask, does it work? Ah. Yes, it does. I can scribble with it. On to the spine. Yes, I'll clean up my mess later. Me. No. Yes. I can this before I can do my next project. So. Alright, do the cool part. The bolts away from the really cool part. Or the, the clip. So how this ends up on your on your guys' website? Yes. Try to remember safety first. I've walked into it before. Not fun. You guys are awesome. I don't do this for just everybody. Cool. Okay. 
Here. The owl. Or the, the wild owl on antique brass, 30 caliber. Bolt action. And you can get a good close up of that. All these clips do have a bolt action hunting rifle on them. Perfect for the bolt action guys. Now what do we get? Oops, hold on. There's an error. <laughs> no! Error! Yeah, error. Hold on. Error! The point was sticking out too far. Error! Oh, minor adjustments and some praying and get my work. Now, you have to understand, all these kits are... All these kits are going to be perfect when they come out of the thing. I, I understand that, so... As long as it works and you guys are happy with it... Hope so. Alright, you you're already zoomed out. Oh, well, I have to do the final... Yeah. Other than um, putting dust all over the fuzzies. Oh. Yeah. That's I didn't do it. It sometimes happens. It all so. As long as I didn't break the camera, that's all I care about. So yes, a little bit of advertising for myself. Uh, you do get a, if you do order a pen. Other than these guys, they didn't order them. I just did this because well, they're awesome and. I enjoy watching them. They do come in a nice fuzzy velvet box. So we have Damon. It's oh. fine. Hey. Okay. Damon. Hey. Okay. It's fine. So Bloodwood, Wild Olive. This one Enders. Enders it if you don't like it. Punched Damon in the head. He told me leopard wood, so you got leopard wood. And the only piece I had of this was of Matumi. It's another piece. Of, it's another type of hard, exotic hardwood. Uh, this is what Joey Team has. This one's coming to you. So I have two gun metals and two antique brass, 30 caliber bolt action rifle pens for the bolt action guys at tabletopbattle.com.